We've got bands, insulation, and loads of adhesive. That can only mean one thing, it's time to start the subfloor. Morning and welcome back to our van plan. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at our subfloor. Um, we're gonna be showing you how we create it, um, planned it, built it and fitted it, um, hopefully. Uh, so the intention here is to provide a solid, um, flat floor for to build the conversion up from. Now obviously all the furniture and stuff will be attached to this floor um, and it's gonna be where we're gonna be walking in and out of the van all the time, so it needs to be really sturdy. Um, so what we're gonna use is 25 mil battens to create a frame across the floor. Um, and then within the gaps within that frame, we'll use 25 mil PIR insulation board um, to provide that insulated barrier. And then on top of that, to, to create the subfloor, we'll use 12 mil ply. Um, a lot of people use 18 mil. We've decided for 12, mainly because we need as much height as possible. I think once the ceiling's installed as well, we're both six foot, so we really need to maximize that space. So we're using 12 mil ply um, on top of the, the frame, um, and that'll be screwed down into the frame and hopefully into the some of the fixings straight through into the chassis as well. Um, but we'll come onto that in a bit later. And then um, and then yeah, that's that's the next big part of the, the conversion to, to get going. It's a standalone task, but it's good, uh, good to get that done first, um, as then we can kind of build from that. We'll know our heights, we'll know what, where we can fix things to, and so on. So uh, yeah, let's get going. Right, so the first thing to do is spend a bit of time in the van, looking at the floor, look around all the edges, the wheel arches, some of the strange shapes and features of the van, because you need to bear that, all of that in mind when you're planning where the framing is gonna go. Um, so we've got these uh, ribs, ridges, whatever you wanna call them in the floor, that run across nicely. Um, and we will glue the framing to these to give it some uh, solid firm foundation um, to, to kind of stick to and support it. Um, in this particular van, one of the issues that we have is that these ribs uh, or ridges kind of stop about three centimeters short from the edges. Um, so for example, if we were to run one down this way, there would be a little gap the other side of it, which isn't ideal. We want the floor to really butt up nicely against the, um, the outer side of the van. So um, what that led me to decide was that the longest lengths of batten should run widthways across the van. So they will come across here and then they can overhang the, the last um, raised ridge a little bit. The insulation can then butt nicely up against the, um, the edge of the van um, and we'll, we'll have that snug fit that we need. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is where your furniture is gonna be. Um, so if we look at this blue line here, this is where our kitchen units are gonna come out to. So we need to make sure we've got a batten running along here so that we can screw the kitchen units into that batten to give them extra strength and to secure them in place. So um, so yeah, so we're gonna go with long widthways battens along the van and then fill in the gaps with lengthways, smaller, shorter battens to provide that kind of square grid um, support for the plywood on top of that. Um, the other thing to think about, like I say, is just looking around all the edges. So the van, um, this particular van, the floor kind of tilts up at the very edges, so we might need to do some kind of adjustments there. The other thing to consider in this van is that we've got these tie down points across the floor. There's six of them, two, uh, two, this, two there, two in the middle and two at the back. Um, so what we're thinking of doing is removing those and then we will screw through the plywood from the top right into the uh, van floor, into the threaded screw here, I think it's an M8 um, bolt, um, to give to, to help push the plywood down and secure it properly to the van floor, the van chassis. Um, so, so yeah, definitely spend a lot of time thinking about it. Lots to consider, but it's well worth doing. So once you've um, had a look around the back of your van, and thought about how you want your floor to um, be structured, the next thing to do is to draw it out. So I took an uh, able piece of paper and I've drawn the outline of the van here. And then what I've done is, because we're gonna have our longest lengths of battening running widths, widthways, um, I put those in first, and there's seven there, um, into the positions that I want them. And then the second stage was then to fill in the gaps with lengthways, smaller battens to kind of create some of this structure. 
Um, like I say, you need to bear in mind where your furniture is going to be. So our kitchen units will attach here um, and our seat will kind of be somewhere here. Um, so that's really important to make sure you, you kind of incorporate that into the layout. Um, I think with the lengthways battens, the smaller battens here, I may not need so many of them. So I'm just going to kind of cut out as many as I can and then make a final decision once everything's laying in place. Um, but the widthways ones are pretty much where I need them to be. So, and then, yeah, the other important um, thing to do, because you'll be dry fitting this first, taking everything out, probably putting it all back in, you need to know which baton is which. So I've numbered the widthways ones one to seven, and then the lengthways ones, uh, one, 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 two, one, three, two, one, two, 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 three, three, one, three, two, three, three, and so on. So I know exactly where they go. And then once all that's in place, it's all dry fit. We've got the layout exactly how we want it. We can cut the PIR board um, to fit each of the um, spaces available um, and get all that fitted, tested, and make sure that's okay before we then go on to glue down the buttons and fit the uh, PIR board permanently. So, um, so let's make a start. We're going to start with measuring these width buttons and get some cut. Okay, so all the width waist battens are in place and measured, numbered, and put into the position that I think they need to go into for the final floor layout. I'm quite pleased with those. I think number five there is a bit warped, but we'll see how much wood I've got left. I might need to redo that one. The other one is I, um, I don't know if you noticed, I measured this back one, number seven. Um, for some reason it was a bit too short, so luckily that fit nicely at the front here in that little well there and then I was able to recut number seven to fit um, a little bit wider at the back there. So yeah, stage one complete, happy with that. Next is to start the lengthways um, buttons. So just making sure that this one is going exactly where I need it to be, as is this one. And then I can measure the distance here and then create, I'm probably gonna do one, two, three, four of those. Um, all the same length, nice and easy, so I'll go and chop those, get those fitted, and then start working back that way so that just in case there's any discrepancies, I can always adjust back as I go. Okay, so one thing that I've noticed is that this um, last raised part is slightly higher than all of the other ones. Um, so I don't know if you can see in there that this piece is resting here, but there's a bit of a gap on this part here. So what I'm going to try and do is chisel out or cut out a little bit at the bottom of this particular one. So it will just come lower this end and just level it out. Um, and that needs to be done on one, two, three, four of those. So I'm going to try on a test piece, see how I get on before I try on these ones. Okay, this is probably a bit overkill, but I'm um, going to use the chop saw to just slice out a section of the wood here um, so that then it will just sit over the top of that, um, that notch. Um, it seems to be the quickest and easiest thing based on the equipment I've got available right now.
thought, but let's try it. Okay, so it's a bit rough and ready, a little bit chipped out underneath, and then it then sits a little bit firmer there, and it's flush all the way along now. So I think that gives me what I wanted out of that. Um, proof will be in the pudding once we glue it down. So that's all the buttons cut, um, laid out in the van where they're going to go, uh, making sure everything kind of works out okay and everything's in the right place. Um, broadly really happy with, with this, I think it's going to give us enough stability and leave enough spaces for the PIR insulation to go in between. Um, so the next stage now is to take it all out, clean up the floor, give it a good hoover and a clean and then um, bring it all back in and start to glue it down and that's going to be like an overnight job so hopefully get some of the certainly the width waste bands glued today I might have to return to this tomorrow to, to do the in-between ones once the width ones are all in place. <laughs> Okay, so the moment of truth, gluing in the first button. This is the front one, obviously. We're gonna start here, make sure this one's right, and then we can work our way back. Um, I've marked exactly where it's gonna go with some Sharpie just to, for the first uh, position. So I'll take that off. Put some dabs of adhesive on all the raised areas and put it back on. Let's go. Just need to get a weight on that um, and start to work our way backwards. So that's us at the end of a busy day in the van. Um, we've cut all the buttons. I've just glued all of the widthways buttons in place, uh, hence all the different weights that I could find um, in the garage to kind of keep those pressed down overnight while the glue goes off. Um, if you're interested, I use CT1 adhesive, uh, which seems to be doing quite a good job. Um, so the next stage is gonna be to come in and fit all of the lengthways um, cross buttons, um, and then we'll move on to the PIR um, before we can then work on to the uh, work with the ply to get the subfloor down on top of this. I think that's going to be in another video because there's quite a lot here. Um, but we'll catch up uh, next time when I come back and finish all the gluing. We're back in the van a um, few days ago since we were last here. Um, I think when I left you, we just glued in the widthways buttons. Um, I popped out one evening and glued in the length waist buttons in between those so that's everything is now glued down and pretty uh, securely fitted there um, the only bit I think is back here this piece is supposed to go here but um, it ultimately is a little bit um, higher than the rest of it so I need to kind of trim that one down and spend a bit of time just making sure that that is uh, level there but overall really pleased with it um, so today's job is to make a start on the PIR installation board and what we're going to do is cut that to each of these gaps and then uh, fit that in. Need it to be a fairly snug fit. So I'll do a few first and see how that comes along. Um, and then, yeah, we'll crack on with that. So I've updated my trusty diagram um, and I've numbered all the gaps. So basically, if we need to take any of this out, I know exactly where it's going to go back in. Um, and then the plan is to measure out each of the uh, gaps in between the battens transfer it to this 25mm Kingspan PIR board. I think the uh, standing knife will be fine for cutting through this depth of insulation. So we'll cut it out, we'll fit it in here, make sure it's a nice snug fit, 
I'm not expecting any of this to be truly square, so there might be some kind of slight editing of it, but we'll give the first one a go and see how we get on. Too long actually. Hopefully, that might. <laughs> Wedge in. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this isn't ideal, but I think that'll be fine for there. We'll be taping over this anyway. And the key part is here, so I think we'll be alright with that, but um, I'm going to try and do it better and neater for the next one. So I can see why everyone buys the electric bread knives for cutting this insulation. It's gonna be a lot easier. We don't have one of those, um, unfortunately, but I have found a way that I think I can do this in a fairly uh, controlled and accurate way. So I'm basically gonna use an old um, kitchen knife, quite a big one, that's obviously thicker than the uh, depth of the insulation. And then if I mark out the on the board where to cut, and then I kind of run the knife blade to cut the foil um, along each side and then start to push the knife all the way through and carefully carve backwards um, to carve out the edge and that seems to work really well so learning as we go um, but that's a, that's a tip that I've got if you don't have one of those electric bread knives to hand. So we are halfway through the van and this is all we've got left of the first sheet and we've covered this much um, floor. So got into a bit of a rhythm with it now. Um, of course these aren't entirely square so it is a bit of a pain. Um, some of the, there's a few gaps and stuff like that which I need to go and deal with later. But overall it's not too bad and once the tape's on there um, it should be fine. I will kind of try and stuff some additional insulation in the bigger gaps, but overall it's okay. So it's got the back part to do now, um, so I need another board to do to finish that. But um, yeah, let's crack on. So I think we're gonna leave it here for this afternoon. Uh, it's starting to get dark and cold. So um, we've done all of the insulation, PIR board cut and fit into all the gaps with, between the battens. Uh, I've done a few bit of the 
few bits of the fiddly bits up at the end around the um, where the seats are and stuff. Tomorrow, the last bits to do really are a few more fiddly bits around the wheel arches and at the back, and then to use the aluminium foil tape to create a complete vapor barrier across the floor. So we'll crack on with that tomorrow morning. So it's another day. Um, it's about three degrees out here, but the sun's shining, so that's all good. Um, back in the van to finish off what we were doing yesterday with the insulation in the floor. Um, need to do a couple of things. So one, look at all the complicated edges that I just need to finish off around the wheel arches and things like that. Need to look for any gaps and fill them with insulation, um, probably the plastic bottle um, wall type insulation. Kind of squeeze that in there. Um, and then we're going to use the aluminium foil tape to um, create a vapor barrier over the battens. So let's get going. Um, a lot of the niggly little corners are kind of dealt with. Um, so the next stage now is to look for some of the areas where it's not quite as uh, snug as I'd hoped, like here for example, um, and also places like over the back there um, and various other bits and pieces. So I'm going to, um, I bought some of this plastic bottle um, insulation, it's just kind of like wool. So I'm going to have a go at using bits of that and then basically um, with a screwdriver or something just kind of wedging that in any gaps possible to try and just pack out that area. So we'll see how we get on. So yeah, I think that went okay. Um, it's a bit of a fiddly, but you can pack in quite a lot in there. So I'm just using this um, sort of putty knife tool, which is making it a bit easier. And uh, we'll go around and do all the rest now. So the final part of this process to get this ready for the ply is to um, tape using this um, aluminium foil, aluminium tape or whatever it is to um, basically run across the battens to create a vapor barrier across the king span. Um, we have these plastic covers for these like wells um, on, the, on our van so I've taken them off and then I can tape kind of right up to that and tuck it in as well to create that um, seamless uh, barrier across the floor. So we'll do that and then that's the end of this particular part of the subfloor. Okay, so that brings us to the end of part one of the subfloor uh, installation in our van. Um, so we basically cut and glued the battens, installed the 25mm PIR board, and then taped across all the joints to form a vapour barrier. Um, generally it's been okay, it's taken quite a long time. Um, a few fiddly bits around the edges um, and things like forgetting the trim, but you know, actually that's probably the, the worst thing that happened. So pretty pleased with how it's, um, how it's turned out. Um, the next stage is to install the plywood subfloor on top of that. That's gonna be in another video. Um, if you like this video and found it useful, then please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel to follow our build. Uh, we're also over on Instagram at our van plan and we'll see you in the next video.